follow these four rules by Warren Buffett to become a millionaire. One of the most famous people in the business world and in finances is Warren, the Oracle of Omaha, Buffett. He is characterized as a businessman filled with wisdom and sage-like patience in making investments. That's why they call him the Sage or the Oracle of Omaha. Studying a mind like his will help you reach your dreams of becoming a millennial millionaire someday. Here are four rules that Warren Buffett uses that will help you become a millionaire. My name is Munif Ali and I became a self-made multimillionaire in my early 20s. I've built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars of sales. I started making these type of videos to share my life experiences to teach others how to become more successful in life and in business. If you like the type of content I'm about to give you, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and share this video with someone you would think would find this helpful. Warren Buffett is known for being cautious when it comes to money. He once said, do not save what is left after spending, but spend what is left after saving. Buffett always recommends that people should pay for their savings first, meaning that you should prioritize saving in your budget. Because when you're young, it's easy for you to waste money on wants. And that could even mean spending most of your money on your startup or your passion project or things you might not ever need again. But what if it fails and you don't have any spare money to bounce back on? It would be foolish to say, at least I've tried, but ended up in bankruptcy. Always make sure you set aside some money for your emergency funds and savings. And even if you have some spare, Buffett believes that you should put that bit of extra money into your investments to diversify your portfolio and increase your backup money. So even your backup money shouldn't just be underneath the mattress sitting around. Buffett is known to be a frugal person. He doesn't splurge on the latest brands unless he needs to. For years, he's been using a $20 flip phone and only in 2020 did he switch to an Apple smartphone. Yet, he doesn't even use all the complicated apps, just what he needs. He shared that if he wants to pay for a luxury item, let's say a car, he would often buy two slightly used ones for second hand and he would still try to find ways to make a profit out of that item by reselling it in the future. So if you're looking for branded items, make sure that you use it as a leverage. Think of it as a form of investment. For example, if you've got a very popular Instagram and you're using that Instagram to sell products, you're using that Instagram to promote business, and you've got a couple of brands showing on there, it'd be great for you to be paid by those brands. Or conversely, maybe it's a lifestyle that you're particularly showing, but you're building a brand to be able to showcase now, you're not just buying something for the heck of buying it. So in a nutshell, be careful when you splurge on brands because you can still find opportunities to earn from them as well. For example, let's say you buy a car. Well, if you buy a car that's always gonna keep its value, let's say a secondhand Mustang or a Corvette or something like that's always gonna be popular. There's always a market for it. Just remain frugal so you don't have to go out there and buy the newest of everything and make it a plan to resell it later if you wanna recoup your investments. For years, I was a luxury watch type of person. I had multiple watches and the great thing about certain watches that I had was that when I sold them, I got back exactly what I put into them or a little bit more. So I could have just bought any type of watches, but I purposely bought ones that I knew there was a market for that will always hold its value. There were a couple of trendy watches that came on board, but they didn't have the history that the watch that I picked did. For example, I bought a Rolex and that's always popular and that always has a market for it versus some other off brand that I could end up paying just as much for, but it's just popular because it's a trend. I hope that makes sense. And if it didn't, go ahead and ask me specific questions down below and I'll be sure to answer it in the comments section. Buffett claims that if you buy things you don't need, you will soon end up selling things you need. Pretty interesting, because when a person takes out a loan and uses their credit card, there should be a purpose to it. Stop using loans and credit cards on useless stuff. These two have the highest potential to set you back in your savings. Buffett has always led an example of using cash on small purchases. In this way, he doesn't overspend and he has a very realistic view of his money. But if you need to use plastic, make sure you research on how you can fully optimize your credit card and maintain a high credit score. He's one of the world's richest men, but he doesn't splurge on a lot of things. He has a simple house, a simple car, and while his lifestyle might not be yours, there are indeed some lessons to be learned here. Just a quick break, I'm really excited about sharing this news with you. I'm giving away a free ebook on money management. If you sign up using the link down below, you'll receive a free PDF copy of my book. I've compiled all the best resources on money management, especially for millennials and younger who want to become future millionaires. So make sure you grab a copy now. In 100% full disclosure, I'm not gonna ask you for anything. 
I'm not trying to upsell you anything. I'm not trying to get you into some type of program. This is just my way of giving back. If you like the type of content that I'm giving you, apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that like and subscribe button and let me and the algorithm know that this video is valuable to you so I can continue to make you more content like this one each and every week. Buffett believes that borrowing money to buy stocks is not worth it. For one, it's too big of a risk. At any time, the stock market can crash. And if that happens, you'll be in debt for no good reason. And that includes other types of investments like cryptos and NFTs and even real estate to an extent. You could have just saved some money instead and slowly added to your investment. One example he stated is when he took Berkshire Hathaway public in 1964. Their stock price was only $19 at the time, but now that $19 from the 60s would be worth an astronomical $462,000. He didn't borrow any money. He did this by being patient, doing research, and letting the magic of compound interest do its thing. It's better to take small steps in investing, and when the market crashes, stay calm and don't panic. He shared that in his lifetime, he has experienced four different market crashes down 59% in 1973 and 1975, down 37% in 1987, down 49% in 1998 to 2000, and down 51% during the Great Crash 2008 and 9. He remained steadfast and believed in his product all throughout those years. So there you have it, the four rules to live by from Warren Buffett. I believe the key takeaway here is to be frugal and patient with your investment. It's not worth taking the risk. It's not worth the risk to take high risk actions like taking out loans for investments or hoping for a quick cash or a quick return. Remember, wealth is built over time and Warren Buffett didn't become a billionaire until his late 50s. Remember to remain steadfast and take your time researching the assets when you can. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Comment down below and tell me which was your favorite rules from Warren Buffett. If you want to learn more about investments, I made this great video about how to take advantage of the stock market by investing in real estate. Watch that video next.